Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part 18 of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, you'll find out how to best export your music to avoid any loss of audio quality and how to get it right for the streaming services and CD. So you've recorded, edited and mixed your music. Now it's time to export it into a single stereo file so that you can share it, you can post it online. Normally when exporting a piece of music for CD or for streaming, uh, it would be mastered first. Um, we're not gonna go over that today. Audacity, when it comes to music, there are a few limitations. Um, it's best used strictly for sort of demo purposes and things like that. So I will show you a couple of things that, that might be sort of reminiscent of the mastering process, um, but it's not the full, we're not gonna do a full master, so to speak. Um, we're just gonna get it onto one stereo file so that you can share your music. Now the first thing you want to make sure of, um, if you haven't already done so in the mixing stage, is to make sure that nothing's clipping the audio. So you can play the loudest area of the song, probably going to be a chorus or um, something like that, and then just check your output. So this is pretty much peaking at minus six, I've already checked checked that, but if, if it's not, if it's going over and, and hitting that zero dB mark, uh, you're going to want to go in and sort of balance the levels. If everything's already balanced, you can just reduce the, the, the level of everything um, by a little bit. So you could highlight all tracks um, with the selection tool, or you could do Control or Command A, and then you could go to Effect, Amplify, and reduce the whole thing by a certain amount. Um, unless it was just one tiny little section of of the of the song that was that was peaking that was too loud, in which case you can just select that piece. But for example, if your whole thing was a little bit too loud and it was really pushing that um, that meter and, and causing nasty clipping, you can reduce the uh, reduce the level of the whole thing like like so. But I'm going to undo that because I know it's it's fine what we've got here. And then to export your music, you want to go to File and Export. And then you can export in a number of different formats. I'll, I'll, you're gonna to wanna to WAV uh, because that's the, full, uh, that's the full quality audio, uncompressed. Um, so even if you do want a compressed version, I'd, I'd say it's always ideal to have, have the uncompressed version as well. So let's click on WAV to begin with, and it's gonna bring up this dialog box. So there aren't a huge amount of options with, with WAV. It's quite simple because it's not compressed. Um, it's just the raw audio. Obviously you've got the file name there, which you can change. And then we're on WAV because we've already clicked WAV. The encoding, when you're bouncing down to a single stereo track um, for sharing and uploading, 16-bit is absolutely fine. So signed 16-bit PCM is, is, is a sufficient bit depth. And then simply click Save. Then it's going to allow you to assign some metadata tags, which is data uh, that's in, sort of encoded into the file uh, that allows you to see the artist name, track title, and so on when you upload it to a, a streaming service or uh, use it in a media player, for example. Um, so yeah, we can just call, you know, just call, give it the song name and, and so on, um, and then simply click OK. It's normally very quick. That's going to export all of the audio that we have there right up until the end. If you've got a bunch of extra silence on the end, you want to delete that first because that's going to be exported along with it. Um, or you can simply use a selection tool and drag over the audio that you want to select, that you want to export. Then if you go to File and Export, you'll have this Export Selected Audio option. So that's just going to be the same process, but it's only going to export the selected audio between these two selection icons there. And then if you want an MP3, which is a compressed format, it's going to be much smaller in file size, so great for sharing um, if you want to email over a demo to your band or something like that. Um, but you do lose some of the, the fidelity. It doesn't, it won't be quite as good quality, but, but we can go to export again, export as MP3. And then you've got a few more options here because you can make changes depending on the quality that you're after. Now, if you saw the previous episode where we looked at um, exporting podcasts, you know that we, we were on that one, two, eight kilobytes per second, kilobits per second, sorry, uh, which is quite low um, quality. It's not such a problem with just spoken word and things, but with the music, we want that to be higher quality. So 
keep it on the constant bit rate so we know exactly what we're getting and then have a look at this quality drop down. 320 kilobits per second is normally the highest you, you find with MP3s. Um, most people aren't gonna be able to tell the difference, to be honest, between a WAV and a 320 kilobits per second MP3. I wouldn't recommend it if you're uploading to a streaming service or, or burning to a CD or things like that, but just for sharing around, that, that will do you just fine. Um, I wouldn't recommend going any lower unless you're really uh, tight on space or, or you do just want to do a very quick rough demo and, and be able to, to send it over email quickly or something like that. Um, and then we're going to go joint stereo because that's going to combine everything into uh, just a single stereo track. Uh, you can force export to mono if you wanted two mono tracks for whatever reason. And then again, we're just going to click OK. We've got the ID3 tags again, and then it's taking a tiny little bit longer just because it has to do the conversion and the compression. Now that everything's exported, we're gonna bring it back in just to check the file, make sure everything's okay, it's exported okay. And then we're gonna do a couple of things that would normally be left for the mastering stage. Uh, again, we're not doing a full master here, but just to bring the level up um, to a sufficient listening standard. So I'm gonna to go to, where have we got? I'm going to open and then I've re-imported our song, aptly named song. So let's just hit play, make sure it's all, all okay. There we go. So you can see it's quite low in volume. It's only peaking at around, um, around minus six. Most professional masters will peak at around minus one or higher and there'll be a lot less dynamic range. It'll be I mean, if you bring in a, a commercial track into Audacity, you'll see that this wave is like right at the top and thick um, uh, so that it can compete with with other tracks in, on the streaming services and on CDs. Now, it doesn't matter too much with this. Again, we're doing we're doing a more, the, more of a demo, but I will just show you how to bring up the level um, just so that it's sort of listenable next to, to other music that you might have. So if we highlight the whole thing again, or you can do your Control A or Command A, Go into effect and then go right to the bottom here, find limiter. And if you have a hard limit, which is basically limiting the audio, stopping it from going over a certain level and it's pushing it up against, against that level that you've set. So let's say limit to minus one. So that means it's not the, the, the amplitude isn't gonna go over minus one decibels. And we've got make up gain set to yes, which means it's gonna add some gain. And then we're gonna push this up a little bit of extra level. Let's give it five dB. This is the left and right channel, so I want it to be the same. And there you go. So it's pushed it right up. A um, couple, couple of peaks have gone over, over that, that threshold. It's a very basic limiter, um, but generally it has, it has stopped it there at that minus one. And if you listen back, you shouldn't notice any kind of signal degradation at all really, because it hasn't it hasn't pushed it too hard. But I'm just gonna turn it down because it's gonna be much louder now. And as you see it's it's peaking higher now. Um, right up to sort of minus three. You can probably go for a little bit more than that. It's hard to tell what you're gonna get all the time because these plugins, you can't monitor them as you're, as you're working. Um, you've just gotta do a bit of trial and error. Let's push it up to eight dB. There we go and listen back. So you can hear there's a little bit of compression at the top there. Um, it's a it's a case of trial and error. You can always use ex, you can always compress the audio first as well. Um, if we put put it through a compressor to smooth it out a little bit more, uh, you could you could probably get a little bit more out, out of the limiting. Alternatively, you could play around with the amplify or the normalize tool to bring the level up. Uh, but limiter is is more suitable for. Uh, this sort of post um, post mixing slash mastering stage.
And that's it, your music is exported and ready to share. If you stuck with the course from the beginning, then good on you. You should be almost an Audacity Pro by now, but stick with me, there are four more parts to the course. In part 19, I'll be sharing with you some hidden and special features that we haven't gone over yet to help you speed up your workflow and get better results. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're the first to know when that comes out. Leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below what's the biggest thing you're struggling with when producing your audio. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part 19.